Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about is it worth it to buy this set to make it very short? Yes, it is because you have five shocklands at rare. So far, there is no uncommons. I did want to take a snapshot of these Star City game prices before they uh, tank. It's always interesting when I watch the videos a few months later and you can kind of see what went down and what went really down. And then the occasional one card that went up and then you can kind of see if you made the right decision or if there was a factor that you didn't consider or maybe that you overvalued or you undervalued. So essentially, I think this set is very, very weak. Um, the five shock lands are good. The multi-colors are good. The problem with multi-color is it is multi-color, meaning that the playability... So when you go to an artifact set, if you ever wonder why even the quote weak artifact sets like Caldas are very strong, it's because literally everyone can run the same strong artifacts. There is no reason that you wouldn't run the Phoptic Copter, right? It's like the best one. What was it? It got banned. I'm trying to remember its name. Man, gosh, it got banned such a long time ago. But there's no reason you run, wouldn't run the top V. Oh, Smuggler Copter. That was what it was called. There's no reason no any deck would not run it because it is colorless. The problem I have with multicolor is not only are you not colorless, but you also are quite limiting in terms of what decks can play it, even versus a monocolor. Like Liliana the Veil sees play in many decks um, because these. So he's a black planeswalker. Double black is actually more acceptable than something like a black and white or a blue and white. Sometimes you don't want to play white. Sometimes you don't want to play blue. Blue, hard. Anyway, uh, back to my uh, when I look at the mythics, there's nothing special. I mean, maybe EDH that, EDH that, but this. However, a lot of people are hyping this set up. The expected value is just not there. Um, and it reminds me a lot of Gate Crash. Gate Crash was the second set, just like this was the second set. I don't remember exactly when it came out. I think it came out during the summertime, which was another down period for Magic. So Magic right now is a down period. People have sold collections. Collections are coming in uh, a lot right now. And I just no interest in buying them because there's just too much of them. Once we get past the down period, there will be an uptick, but something like an $18 spawn of Mayhem, I mean, it's okay, but it's not $18 okay. Uh, Absorb is an interesting one. I think this artwork is significantly worse. Just like, I mean, who wants to see this artwork? Like, it's terrible, right, in my opinion. But two ninety nine dollars Absorb will be one of the stronger cards. Um, if you have... Salcon Hellkite as a uh, dragon for 15. That's not going to last. The only thing that will last are the Shocklands. And in fact, the Shocklands actually, I think, are a good buy, even in a pre order. I think they're not bad. They will always have value. And if you need them, you need them. So why not just buy them early and play with them? And you get that. You get utility. And you will need the Shocklands because everything is so multicolored. So, as someone who's played Magic a long time, let me tell you what makes a good set. The rares have to be spot on, and in this case, the rares are spot on. There's five of them that I like, all five Shocklands. And you have to have one or two good uncommons. Uh, sometimes an uncommon like Force of Will can make a whole set. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, sometimes a Wasteland or a ancient tomb having a combination of two of them really just propels a tempest set which is otherwise lackluster for the most part also you want to have lands and artifacts lands and artifacts is where you want the majority of the money to be in so it's not only just the rares mythics you really don't want your money to be in a mythic that's not good as we've seen from scarab god and our devastation our Devastation has to be one of the lowest expected value sets of all time, even during Standard. Dragon Maze was another example where you had all your value tied up in Voice of Resurgence, which after being reprinted, now makes the set utter garbage. Here, you have the lands, that's good. You have the five rares, that's good. But you have nothing else. 
you have nothing else that would make a good set. In fact, being multicolor makes it even harder. A lot of the cards that I, in the past, have said was very strong, I totally avoid speculating on multicolor cards. I used to, like, Loplift Troll was probably the last one I said would be an interesting buy. And that, on in my view, power level was very good, but Golgari was not a great deck at the time, so it wasn't going to go to modern. It would just be a standard at most. And if it wasn't going to be good in standard because no one wanted to play Golgari, then you're, you're, you're stuck. And that's my opinion. Uh, Godless Shrine is a very good pickup at $6.99. If any of these fall below 5 I would just buy them out. Uh, I will be point blank. I don't think these will be at five for much longer. Or if I know that these will eventually, there will be a common time where you can buy at least a few of them, two to four of them, at five dollars or below, and that's a very good price. Um, I don't advise speculating on them. I do not advise holding them because you can be assured that we will be back to Ravnica in about two to four years, maybe four years, on the long end. And, of course, we'll get another reprint of Shocklands, if not sooner, from a supplemental product. That being said, I like them. They're easy to trade. They're easy to, okay, they're easy to accumulate now. And then when you save them, they'll be easy to trade. So regardless of their value, there's two different things I look at when, um, now that I own a store, there's two different things I've always looked at as a, you know, when I buy Magic Collections. Oh, great. This is a random EDH foil that's apparently worth $40, but no one wants it, and it's impossible to move, and it sits on TCG Player for many months. I don't like that at all. I do not like that at all. Give me that value of $40 in Shocklands that I can move whenever I want them. I can trade up. I can trade down. I can trade sideways. Um, that's the true key. Um, that is the absolute key to making a very, very good decision here is liquidity like how liquid is the asset can i sell so it's the same thing with bitcoins versus uh a cd or money in your bank yeah money in your bank might not even have interest it's just sitting in your bank but you can use it today you can use it tomorrow bitcoins or bitconnect coins i mean it's hard to trade those things like bitconnect especially i heard that you can trade it but it's really difficult no, I do not want my money tied up in a, an asset that is like impossible to move because you never know what will happen. You never know what opportunity will come across a store. I've seen some really, really, I've seen some collections and a person wants like a ridiculous amount of money. It's just like passed. Those are easy passes. The more difficult ones are when you're taught buying EDH cards and the price is about right. It's buy list, but it's like, how am I going to move this? The snap buys are if you just sell me uh, shock lands and buy list, I'll buy them all. You sell me fetch lands and buy list, yeah, who cares? Uh, Lily's a good example of something that I got burnt on. I bought too many lilies. And then she got reprinted. But uh, long term, I think it's still okay. Anyway, the set overall is quite weak. And if you want to take my advice, if you have gotten into the eight minute mark, mark, I'm gonna give you some wisdom. Trade all your standard crap into Shocklands whenever you have the possibility. That Mythic Dragon, trade it for free Shocklands. That Mythic Angel, trade it for two Shocklands. And that's how you can accumulate real estate. And therefore you will have trading bait for years to come. And that's what I do. I trade crap into Shocklands all the time. And it's kind of, uh, it's almost as good as cash in my opinion. Because it's that liquid. It's that necessary in modern, even ED8 and standard. Even legacy. I can kind of see it being played in legacy, like maybe in the future when the dual lands, there's less of them. Uh, the other big wisdom I have for you guys is Stomping Ground is 10 bucks. Uh, Isolated Chapel is 7 You'll probably find a few of these Shocklands below 5 Never buy the most expensive Shockland. Stopping ground will not will not always be the most expensive shock land or ten dollars. It could be less, but the ones that are I would much rather have two isolated chap or isolated. I keep saying isolated chapels, but that's not the right one. Hollowed fountains. That's a blue white. 
Man, I'm blanking on this name right now, the Orzov one. I'm blanking on the name. I Godless Shrines, because I never play with it. <laughs> it's not usable in modern. Right now, it is not, at least. I think the last time I played Godless Shrine was in, like, a modern white weenie deck with, like, tokens with Lingering Souls. That was a fun deck. But yeah, a Godless Shrine might be the cheapest one right now, but it will not be in the future. Things change all the time. Splinter Twin is a very good example. The Steam Bands used to be the cheapest one, and when Return to Ravnica happened, it was 5 to $6. Temple Gardens was 12 to 15 because that was the best deck at the time. So you could trade a Temple Gardens or two Steam Bands, and that's what I did every single time I could. And then eventually, after they rotated out and... Splinter Twin was the best modern deck. Guess who? What was the most expensive Shockland? Steam Fence. That's exactly what's going to happen here. I can't tell you which of these low value Shocklands will be more pricey. And then, of course, in a reversal of Fertzen, <laughs> then they banned Splinter Twin, right? I mean, it's stuff like that. You never know which Shockland will be the most expensive, but I can tell you it's not the one that is currently the most expensive today. A year from now, it's not going to be the most expensive. Two years from now, it'll be a different shock land. And as long as you can play the long game and you're not like five selling all the time, you'll be fine. Trade all this crap into shock lands. That is my best advice for you. And I'm actually going to make a funny video about this on like the worst MTG finance advice ever given. Uh, and it's pretty funny. Yeah, I, I have the screenshot already. Like, it's an unbelievable screenshot. <laughs> Bye, guys.